Welcome to my new animated series where I hope to cover topics about reptiles and broader issues regarding science and nature. My name is Rebecca, this is Leopard Gecko, and today we're looking at parthenogenesis. So what is parthenogenesis? This is a form of asexual reproduction and is defined as reproduction from an ovum without fertilization, especially as a normal process in some invertebrates and lower plants. However, parthenogenesis is not limited to inverts and lower plants, as it has been observed in more than 80 vertebrate species, including reptiles and fish. I know some of my own audience have had female crested geckos produce offspring without ever being near a male. I don't believe this has been observed in leopard geckos, but since it has in crested geckos, I tend to leave any eggs my gecko produces in her tank. There have been a few famous cases of pathogenesis over the years. In Louisville Zoo, Kentucky, a reticulated python named Thelma, who had never been bred with, produced six eggs who grew up to be healthy young snakes. In 2006, Flora the Komodo dragon made headlines around the world when she produced 11 pathogenic eggs. She had been at Chester Zoo since 1999 and had never been near a male. A paternity test later proved she was genetically both mother and father to the offspring. Asexual reproduction or pathogenesis has been seen in many other animals who often switch between asexual and sexual reproduction. These include aphids, black-tip sharks, bonnet-head sharks, a species of spider named this, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that, but these spiders have been found in subtropical and tropical parts of the world. They are believed to be pathogenic since no male species has ever been found. Pathogenesis has also been seen in New Mexico whiptail lizards, morning geckos, and Indo-Pacific geckos, known as fox geckos, just to name a few. So how does this occur? First, we should look at sexual reproduction, where an egg and a sperm cell fuse to form a zygote. Five to six days later, that becomes a microscopic ball of cells called a blastocyst, which then develops into an embryo. This diagram from Encyclopedia Britannica shows how both haploid and diploid pathogenesis differs from regular sexual reproduction. Feel free to pause and take notes. For offspring produced through automixis, they'll usually inherit two X chromosomes, meaning they should all be female. This is often seen in species such as aphids. However, aphids can switch between asexual and sexual reproduction, storing fertilized eggs only to be laid during seasonal changes, since eggs produced through sexual reproduction are thought to have a greater ability to survive winter temperatures, laying dormant until temperatures rise. On rare occasions, a female aphid will produce a male. However, he will be genetically identical to his mother, except he will lack a second X chromosome. He will be able to reproduce, but his sperm will only carry an X chromosome, meaning all of his offspring will be female. So why does this occur? Why did Flora, for example, randomly lay fertile eggs without a male? Well, the beauty of pathogenesis is an animal can pass on their genes without wasting time and energy trying to find a mate. This is particularly important in challenging conditions. For example, if Flora, the Komodo dragon, found herself on an uninhabited island, she could potentially create a population of dragons all by herself. Maybe living on her own in a zoo triggered her body into this survival mode. The downside to this, however, is that they'd be genetically identical. And in the wild, this could make them more vulnerable to diseases and environmental changes in comparison to a genetically varied group. So pathogenesis is an excellent choice for passing on your genes when you don't need no man, <laughs> especially if you're an invert, a fish, or a reptile. However, the big drawback is you could form a population of vulnerable individuals. Pathogenesis is yet to be truly observed in mammals, but if your lone reptile, fish, invert, or even amphibian lays eggs, just double check them before you throw them away. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, thank you for watching, and goodbye.